Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Friday. Today I'm going to talk about something very functional. Windex. Your parents loved it. They used it for everything. Cleaning the windows, spanking the children, washing the dog. I don't know. There are people who use it for everything, and believe it or not, so did Jackson Charbel when they talked about how to take care of their necks back in the 90s. And that's how I learned this trick. I read one of their pamphlets uh, because I had a Jackson. I had a Kelly KE3 or K3. Uh, Jackson Kelly is an explorer style of guitar. Super cool. Um, and this is how you do it. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Hit that like button, subscribe, and here we go. So, I fitted this nice GoPro to my guitar so that I can give you a couple close ups of what's going on here. As you can tell, normal wear and tear when you're playing, the dirt from your fingers will kind of reside around the frets. And it's a good idea to clean that out. Now, I do wash my hands before playing or when I'm playing, but even then, you grab something off the ground when you're in the middle of playing, your hands get a little bit dirty, somebody hands you a drink, it's sticky, you know, something like that. Those kind of things will happen. And so you do have to take care of the neck of your guitar because you put grime in it and on it. And you, what you want to do essentially is clean it out, seal it up, so that when you then touch it with dirty hands, those bad oils with dirt in them don't get into the wood. So here's how it all plays out. You're going to think this is crazy, but Windex, yes, the miracle thing. No, the, the key to Windex is the ammonia dries out the wood, pulls out the dirt, and I'll show you the towel when, when we're doing it. And then once it's dry, after it's dry, you're going to use petroleum jelly. Yes, everyone knows what this is, petroleum jelly. Uh, they wrote songs about it. You put it in your hair when the 90s or 80s and 60s too. Vaseline. Yeah. So you're going to put a little bit of Vaseline on. Then you're going to rub it in thoroughly. You're going to do the whole neck. Then you're going to go back and rub it all off very well so that it's not greasy because you don't want a greasy neck. But I'll tell you, everyone who plays my guitars is like, man, your necks feel great. And this is why. So here we go. So I don't have a great angle to show you because I have the GoPro attached to the body of the guitar. But I'm going to start right in the middle of the guitar so you can kind of see the work as it's being done and then I'll speed it up and I'll do the whole guitar so you don't have to sit here and wait forever. I'm going to put some Windex on this paper towel then you are just going to clean the frets really well. The point is to dry them out so don't be afraid of getting them super soaked as you're doing this and look at that. That is the grime that's on your neck and that's why this is a great solution for it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video now, and I'll meet you guys when I get to the next stage. All right. So now we have the guitar. The neck is all dry because Windex is going to dry really fast. So don't you don't have to worry about letting your guitar dry super long. It dries really really quick you can watch it drying as you're wiping it um so i'm still gonna let it sit for about a minute while i move on to the next stage usually i'll start at the beginning of the guitar work my way all the way up but for you guys i started here so you could see what, what i was doing so i'll just give the guitar in general a bit of time usually i start down here go up here and then by the time i'm up here i feel like this is usually dry enough to start right away with that stuff but i'll give it just another minute or two and make sure it's thoroughly dry so while it's drying, let's talk about a few things. I know that a couple people that have worked on guitars their whole lives are going to say, well, I haven't ever heard of that. That sounds ridiculous. Why would you do that? Again, I learned this when I was 16 years old from a pamphlet on guitar care. And I've been doing it for 22 years. You do the math. Yes, I'm old. Anyway, so... I've done it on guitars for decades. Those guitars, the ones that I've been doing it since I was that age, are in great shape. They, the wood is in better shape than these new guitars that I just got. You know, it's it really, really is a great method. So, without further ado, let's move to the next section. I oddly feel like a tattoo artist right now, but this is essentially what you're going to do. You're just going to take a little bit. Oh, that's way too much. You're just going to take a little bit, and then you're just going to dab it every two frets. If they're thin frets, you can dab it every three frets. 
All right, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna start working it in to the neck of the guitar and really, really work it in. Think of trying to heat it up. You're trying to get that to like melt into the wood. So really put some pressure on it and rub it quite a bit. And then on these in-between frets, if you don't have enough, you can borrow from the fret above it. You're gonna focus more on the center and let it kind of work its way out towards the frets because if you jam it all in there, it's harder to get out from the fret area. And if you need a little bit more, you could grab a little bit more, but you might not need any more. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the video again, get the whole thing nice and clean, and then I'll show you the next step. All right, guys, so this next step is just removing the petroleum that you've put on. So. You're just gonna rub it really, really well until you can't feel any with your thumb. Now your thumbs, when you rub on the, it's still gonna feel slick, but you don't want it to feel greasy. So I'll go ahead and do that and show you an example. So you'll see there's still a little bit of grime coming up and that's, that's kind of this final rub is gonna give you the rest of the grime. So, there you go. You can already see that that is a beautiful neck. It's nice and clean. There's no slime on it, right? And man, does it feel good. Like, this wood feels just smooth, fresh, alive. It makes you wanna play it. All right, so now, a couple tricks on changing strings, and we'll get to it. So, Probably I'll take this thing off for this section, but I'm gonna just show you kind of quickly how I change strings. I got a new set of strings I've never tried before. I really like the brand DR, but my favorite is Elixirs. I use tens. Now I know strings are very controversial too. People are like, well, you're not a real guitar player unless you use 11s, or I use 13s, or the fast guys all use nines. Well, so a lot of studio musicians will use nines. Uh, I know for a while Joe Satriani did. Um, Steve Lukather uses nines in the studios and tens live. I read something sometime when Joe Satriani said, don't switch string gauges, you'll cause hand problems. Really, you cause hand problems when you don't play correctly. People switch from acoustic to electric all the time and they don't get hand problems. All right, so just in case there's any of you who've never changed strings before, this is essentially how it works on electric. On acoustic, it's slightly different. We can go over that another time, but uh, to be functional, you need to know how to work on your guitar. So here we go, Functional Friday. Uh, what we're gonna do is these electric strings, they have a ball at one end, this little guy right here, and then the other end is just pointy and sharp. And what you'll do is, in the back of the guitar, if it's an electric, there are a couple holes right there, right? You're gonna find the one that's associated with the string that you're putting on, so for example, sorry, I'm looking over here just to make sure that everything's in the camera shot. Um, I'm gonna put on the low E, so I'm gonna do the top hole back here, and now we have the top string, the low E sharp it's black all right and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna feed through the eye of the pig here and this particular guitar has these little uh, screws in the back to, to hold the string tight in the peg not all guitars have that usually you just use tension um, but generally you leave about a hands worth maybe a little bit more uh, of distance between the 12th fret uh, and then you can start winding. This guitar I like to leave a lot less because it has that thing that holds it tight so I'm gonna pull it through pretty tight and just wrap it around half a time or once maybe. Um, so go ahead and tighten that down. All right, everything else is tight there and uh, usually you want a string winder which is this little device that I've already packed because I'm moving. So I'm gonna use my hands and I won't make you sit through it and watch it, so we'll fast forward as I do the rest, but essentially that's how you do the strings.
All right, guys, I'm going to stop for a second just to kind of show you my technique here. Generally, when I'm tightening strings, I'll use my middle finger or my ring finger to hold the string tight so that it doesn't move around a lot. And then my first finger is pinning it down to the neck or to the headstock as I'm tightening. That allows it to wrap around the bottom of that peg instead of coming around the top of that peg. So guys, I'm going to stop for a second just to tell you, I have used their color-coded ones before, and I have to say that although the cool factor is there, you know, they make neon ones, I used to put those on my guitars when I used to be a DR artist, um, I do not find them very good strings. I know I know that, that that was a bad sentence, sorry. I do not find them very good strings. I don't think that they're a very good quality string. Um, they start to break up pretty quick as far as the coating itself starts to kind of leave itself around your guitar. And, uh, and you can see through the, to the metal string that's down underneath. You can kind of feel the coating under your fingers and it darkens the sound a tiny bit. So uh, there are some definite downsides to coated strings. And uh, I mean, they're worth checking out because the cool factor is definitely there. Uh, there's nothing cooler than somebody with neon orange strings, which totally reminds me, I'm gonna buy some neon orange strings to go on this guitar because that's kind of my thing, uh, teal and orange. Anyway, uh, yeah, so anyway, not my favorite strings. And there it is, Basic Neck Care 101. They sound bright and sharp right now. Uh, it's a bright amp, but they won't sound bright after like an hour and a half of playing. Or maybe they will. Maybe they fixed that problem. But we'll see. I think it's very valuable to learn how to work on your own instrument, so make sure you do that uh, at some point in your music playing career. Learn, learn enough about your instrument that you know how to fix most of the stuff. I've even done fret work before. I've done a fret mill. Um, I haven't done a fret swap. I helped in doing a fret swap with my old uh, boss when I was working in the guitar shop. So anyway, this is probably gonna be a long one because of all of the stuff that got done, but hopefully you guys found it good. Leave some comments in the comment section of other things that you need to know. Don't forget there's a giveaway. Make sure you comment on this video, like this video, and maybe tell them you can comment why you really need a yellow cake pedal, and maybe that's the way that you'll win. Until next time, keep Friday functional. See you next week.